A person who worked with ID2020 is now speaking out. This article is from Coindesk. Decentralized ID at all costs. Advisor quits ID2020 over blockchain fixation. It's, she's very clearly calling out the things that we're talking about. This is dangerous. The, the techno-solutionism, she calls it. The technocracy. The idea that they're driving towards this push for digital cur uh, uh, currency even and, and immunity passports, which have really, that are by far beneficial to them. And in fact, are actually worse for us, but they don't even care. They're selling it to us as a helpful thing. That's what she's claiming. But then they are, then also, the article seems to, in a very weird and, uh, and almost, I would argue, disjointed way, disparage the idea of decentralization and blockchain technology. Which, I know there are people out there that have become convinced that it's the end of the world, this is the new world order, blah, that, that You're talking about uh, Bitcoin is very different than a... Than a, a uh, uh, Anyway, a, a technology that can be applied, like the internet. The internet, I argue, was it, it was created by DARPA, and it was created, and I argue, in a way to control. But that didn't work out for them, did it? Because we used it in a way to benefit. Blockchain technology can do amazing things. I, I argue it could literally change the way our government functions and keep them accountable if we used, you know, blockchain ledgers for everyone. That, if, you know, imagine if you could, at any moment, access the spending for the Pentagon. And look at them, I mean, if we had blockchain ledgers keeping track of their spending, and imagine if at any moment in time you could just check up and look and see what they're spending it on. They'll never do that, you see, because they need to have black, you know, ops and things behind the scene that you can't see. Twenty trillion dollars, you know, unaccounted for. That's what they want. But I argue this article is in a weird way disparaging that, and I think that's intentional. I think they're desperately afraid of what blockchain and decentralization could do. A decentralized internet as well, is they're terrified of that. But you'll see what I mean as we go through this. Now, an advisor to the ID2020 Alliance, which aims to bring digital identities to billions of people. That's a very kind and deceiving way to put it. What it is, is it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ID. You get a physical card. So it's not just a digital ID. It's your ID with a tracking chip in it that is a national ID. That they have also now tied to the idea of immunity passports. So you won't be allowed to have an ID for your for anything, to be able to fly, travel, any other thing you made an ID for. Go into a bar, unless you have your vaccinations and you can prove it. That's real, and it's already happening. Right? We're not going to force you to do it, but you can't live your life without it, so go ahead and do it. Right? That's what it is. In her resignation email Friday, Elizabeth, the defector from the ID2020 group, she cited the ID2020's opacity. Quote, techno-solutionism. How spot on. And corporate influence along with the risks of applying blockchain to immunity passes. So, you know, I'm with her right up this whole thing. I, I, I don't, the idea is that we should, these don't need to be blended together. We don't even need immunity passports. That should be off the table. Blockchain should, though, be broadly applied to all things government so that we can all keep them accountable. Right? Because that's what that means. It's blockchain technology is something that is open. People can access it and see it. At the stage, it says, I no longer even describe what ID2020, excuse at this stage, I can no longer even describe what ID2020's mission is with any confidence. Think about that. This is a person who was working on this project this whole time, and now she doesn't even, she, they, they've lost the plot. Or rather, she's realized they never really meant to do what they said they went to do. She was of one of a six members of the ID2020's technical advisory committee. She says, all I can perceive is a desire to promote decentralized identity solutions at all costs. Now, that's, again, that seems very strange to me. Once we get into the part, you'll see what I mean once we get into the immunity passports, which is what this is really about. But to push this into, like, it's a bad thing <laughs> that we should want decentralized solutions, I don't know. This felt just interestingly weird to me. But Elizabeth... A fellow at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University, Harvard, which I find interesting, and an expert in cross-border data protection and privacy issues, she was previously in-house counsel at two digital identity startups. 
Her concerns about the technology, which highlight the trade-offs between health and privacy during the pandemic, are spelled out in her white paper, which we'll look at next. She says the introduction of immunity passes could interfere with people's privacy. Well, you don't say. And their freedom of association, their assembly, and movement. Blockchain-enabled immunity certificates, or immunity passports for COVID-19, if implemented by public authorities, would have serious consequences for our fundamental human rights and civil liberties, she writes. That is a person from the inside, guys. Think about that. 